I absolutely idolise Christmas. It's the best thing for me because I love everything edible about Christmas. Cheese board is right up there as an all-time classic. Love a Christmas pud. Absolutely perfect. Love turkey and all that, obviously. Love Christmas cake. Love mince pies. There's nothing I don't like. In fact, my life has improved since someone told me to eat Wensley Dale cheese with a slice of Christmas cake. That's a, definitely, that hasn't travelled to Norfolk, that, uh, that thing. I got that taught to me in Yorkshire a few years ago. So I just thoroughly embraced the whole Christmas thing, mate, if I'm honest. Um, get up, uh, have the same tradition I had as a kid um, when my dad used to take me to the woods with the dog. Uh, and then come back and have a discussingly unhealthy breakfast. Um, so I'll do that <laughs> uh, Christmas morning, take my dog out on that and come back and um, have something disgusting, overcooked, doesn't look like food, but put loads of pepper on it. That's what he taught me. My best ever gift was a bike off my mum and dad, uh, off Santa, sorry. Um, and I remember it well because I'd opened loads of gifts. I got a BMX game, like a remote, not a remote control game, but electronic game. You had to do these jumps and that. And as a kid, you always sort of work out how much everything is. And you think, right, I'm at the edge here. You know, like, the, you know, for exactly like the last gift, either got to be a piece of coal or a bag of peanuts. So I thought, wow, I've done well here. I got that, got a footy kit, got that, got that. I thought, wow, I've done well. And I looked at my older brothers and they hadn't, never do as well as me because I was golden child. Obviously, Santa preferred me, but I was a lot younger, wasn't I? So, and then my dad said to me, and I remember it really well, my mum and dad's house have a little porch, then a hallway, and then the lounge and the kitchen goes off and all that. And my dad said to me, oh, son, go in, because uh, my dad loved this one. I mean, it was before uh, we had remote controls as well. So you had to change channel for your dad. I'd like, give you a clip around the ear and say, put it on channel three. Uh, so anyway, so he went, oh, uh, go and get the paper, will you? Because my dad got a paper every day. And my older brother went, um, well, there's no newspapers on Christmas Day, dad, is there? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he went, yeah, there is, you idiot. Paul, just go and get the newspaper for me. So I went out, opened the porch door, and there, there was my bike. And I just couldn't believe it because I didn't, uh, I, I'd open loads and it was just like, oh my, like literally peed myself. It was beyond it. And obviously the joy my parents must have heard of me like screaming with delight is like priceless. When you can give the likes of Bournemouth and Bristol City, a, you know, a real game, what does that say for the effort and the approach of this team and also your chances of climbing the table in the next few weeks? Well, it says, um, you know, uh, I th obviously, I think uh, we've got a really good chance. I think, like I said, in numerous conversations, I think we're probably five or six points below what we should have collected. But it should give the lads loads of confidence. Um, that is for sure. And I think, you know, it's, it's all about levels. And like we've recruited, you know, the best players that we can get. They give it their all every week. They train really hard. And, you know, Kel Supri, sometimes we underperform. I think it's the same for every club. I just think if... You know, the consistency is the hardest thing for us, I think, um, with this amount of games. Um, for our best players to perform at their max every week, every three days is, is tough. I know it's the same for every team, but um, they've got other advantages possibly. But I, I think it gives us a real uh, indicator that look, when we're at our best, we can compete with every, anyone. However, if we're not at our best, you know... Um, collecting points is very difficult so and I know that's a very obvious thing to say but I think it's even more prudent with us in league one if we're not at our best we could still win but in the championship if we're not at our best we're not even getting a point so I just think it probably intensifies our attention to detail you know our coaches can't work any harder the lads take on loads of information but once they cross the white line no one knows not even Klopp knows what he's going to get guarantee out of his 11 players and sometimes you know a bit of class from the opposition kills us but I do honestly believe that our performances in virtually all the games bar two have shown that we're we're competitive um, and with a bounce here or there or width of a post or a referee's whistle now and again um, we would be in, in good fettle so it, it doesn't you know the run we've been on um, has been disappointing uh, for everybody I, I appreciate but I'm, I'd be unrealistic to think that that wasn't going to happen at some stage because like I said if you go to QPR if you go to Swansea and you start the game bad you're automatically in trouble. So um, they should gain a lot of confidence from that, but also a lot of knowledge at the fact that look, you just cannot not be at full tilt. It's full tilt or nothing for us. And that's probably why this season we're either winning or losing.